Hello and welcome to the Rapid Power Podcast, where we ask power addicts some power platform and some non-power platform questions. Now, let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of Rapid Power Podcast. Um, I'm Vivek Bhavishi, aka that API guy. And I'm super excited to start this new podcast. And I have some amazing guests today. Um, So before I introduce them, just a quick introduction to the podcast. It's going to be a fun, rapid fire style discussion uh, of podcast with Power Addicts. Um, We'll ask three questions on Power Platform, three questions on Not So Power Platform. And we'll get to know some answers from different our guests and Hopefully you enjoy listening to it. So, so let's introduce the guest today. Um, my first guest is John. Needs no introduction, but John Levesque, senior platform evangelist at Microsoft. Um, hashtag FlowFam, hashtag Power Addict. Uh, welcome, John. Thanks for joining today. Hey, thanks so much for having me, man. Happy to be here. Yeah. Um, and our second guest uh, is Geeta, Geeta Sivasalem. Uh, she's a consultant at Artist Consulting, and she is a power addict. So, thank you, Gita, for joining us today. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. So, um, without further ado, let's uh, start our questions. We have some amazing questions from our guests, and uh, the way it would work is I'll first ask the question. We'll go around, and then we'll ask the first guest to ans- ask the second question, and so on and so forth. So. All right. With that, uh, let me ask my first question. That's on Power Platform. So my question is, what is the the new feature that you are most excited about in Power Platform right now? So, John, do you want to take a stab at it? Yeah. Oh man. Uh, so I have one that uh, that. Oh, I wish I could. I don't know if I can talk about it yet because it's it's not quite out yet. Um, I need to I need to talk <laughs> about something live else. on December fourteenth, so you should be good. <laughs> December fourteenth, perfect. Okay, process advisor is my new favorite thing. I am amazed to see process advisor land in Power Automate. For those of you who have not seen it yet, you need to go and look at it immediately. It is an amazing technology. It uses the RPA recorder. You do a process as you're actually working on it and this thing watches what you're doing, measures the time it takes, measures your actions and your clicks, and then it creates this output for you that shows what it what effort and timing goes into that process so that you can actually be better informed about should i automate this is this something we have to do manually is this something that can save us money to try and take some steps out and automate i i'm just blown away by it and so for me process advisor clear number one is that going to help in troubleshooting as well or you know uh, as far as troubleshooting goes i uh, i think you know there's there's some possibilities there, but mm-hmm. I think the the real power of it is more how do we understand what a business process looks like end to end? Because as I as I start the process, maybe it starts as a contract gets filled out and emailed mm-hmm. to me. I then start recording as I download that, as I take the information out, as I move it to another system, as mm-hmm. I then email that off, and then as the next person puts their hands on it. They mm-hmm. also too can be measured in. Okay, now person two, here's their process. I have to move wow. it here. I have to take that data. And then from end to end, it'll map the whole process. Show person one, it took 14 minutes from the wow. time the email hit for them to open wow. it. It took 27 minutes for them to do the data entry portion. And it it brought it, it shows all this in like thickness of lines to show where the slowdown in the process is or where you can streamline the process. It's like Wow, that's crazy. that sounds pretty cool. I mean, it's crazy. yeah, this would yeah. help uh, help find those pain points and those long running uh, tasks or things that bog down your processes. Right? That's that's exactly. amazing. I'm yeah, looking forward yeah. To it. You guys got to check it out. Yeah, and I think it would also help in kind of telling uh, this is the value, right? We are we are doing this process, and now it takes this much time, and exactly. and you get the 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 ideas to automate it more in wherever it's taking more time between two steps. So yeah. I think that's going to be super cool. Totally, totally. 
All right. So, Geeta, which feature are you so looking for forward me, to the most? There's so many. It was hard to pick. Hard to pick one. So, uh, I'm gonna go with D4T. Ah. The whole umbrella of data wars that comes for teams. And, and mm -hmm. I read somewhere, I don't know who it was, but someone tweeted or blogged about it saying it's not just a database and it's so true. It's just not a database. Mm -hmm. It's embedded right within your teams and teams is where most of your day-to-day -day collaboration happens. And mm -hmm. you have the power to work with chatbots, with Power Automate, you can build apps. What can you not do, right? And you're in teams collaborating with your team members or with your at your workplace. Now you can integrate into other different data sources and other services as well. So that has to be my favorite feature. Yeah, I think that uh, there's a lot of things coming over there. And I know they are, Microsoft is working to add much more to that in the near future. So yeah, it's, uh, and the biggest thing is it's it's kind of free, right? With your office license. So yes. it's not kind of free. It's not kind of free. It is free. I mean, if you have the office license, it's free. If you have the office <laughs> license, right. I, yeah, yeah. Right, totally. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's D four D gonna be the 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 new short form that everyone needs to learn oh, from now on. I mean, I don't know if it's official, but we're all Flow Fam's all calling it that, and so in D4D. my mind, like that's about as official <laughs> as it has to be. Nice. Yeah. Nice. How about you, Vivek? What's that? What's your feature, man? Uh so my mine's gonna be a part of what um, Gita just said, and you know the feature that I like has to have API in it, right? <laughs> So I'm I'm the the most excited about I am is the, the Azure API M um, kind of connector. Um, so for those of you do, who don't know about it, you can uh, what you can do is you can use your whatever APIs you're using today. You can host it on Azure API M, so you can manage your APIs different. It could be a third party service. It could be your own API that you have written, uh, where you can so you can bring in the open API file. Uh, manage it in Azure API M, and then within like four steps, I'm telling you it's four steps on the screen. You can create a custom connector from that Azure API M for Power Platform, which you can use in your apps and DataVerse for Teams. Nice. So that's nice. huge. Basically, you can connect to any third-party service using that Azure API M um, kind of uh, platform. And you just pay for Azure APM, which is, I want to say it's peanuts compared to what you would pay for a per user license, <laughs> uh, standalone license. Because there you're paying for the usage of the connector yep. of that API, not mm -hmm. the usage per person. Yep. Um, so that's huge. You basically can connect to any third party service, bring in that data, make it interact with your Dataverse for Teams tables, mm -hmm. and do whatever you want there, right? So it's, I think that's a big, difference. And the reason why I'm saying that, the other reason is when I started creating API videos, it was because HTTP connector was not premium. <laughs> yeah. It was the one custom connector that was allowed. Yeah. And then yeah. like three months into it, they made it premium. Uh, but now again, there's another scope. I can make more API videos and tell them, oh, you don't need a premium connector for this now. You can use it in Teams for free. So that's huge. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's definitely a game changer. Just thinking about it, um, you know, if you have any legacy apps in your organizations, and then if there is an API labor over it, you don't. All you have to do is just jump into Teams and go through these four steps in less than five minutes. You have a connector that is integrating into an existing API layer, and yeah. you have access to all of the legacy data that you would want to. So it, it's 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 a really cool uh, feature that's come as part of Teams, and yeah. the best part is it's free apart from the you know, minimum Azure cost that you'll be paying, which is not a lot. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's true. It's uh, it's a it's a game changer, I would say. Um, yes. People are still yet to realize it, but yeah, it, it, when they realize, it, like, yeah, we can do a lot with this now. Yeah. Very cool. All right, John. What 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 question do you have for us today? All right, so I want to talk power virtual agents. I've been getting my hands dirty in, in making chat bots lately. I've really enjoyed the experience. And so I wanted to ask you guys, have you had a chance to play with them yet? If you have, what do you think? Uh, what's the authoring experience like? What's the, what's the end user experience like? Just give me kind of a rundown on your feelings about PVA. Kita, you want to go ahead? Sure, yeah. So I've played around with it, and I have to say it's like it's awesome up 
you know, I, I love the fact that you can build low code chatbots like in less than five minutes. And you can just build that and, you know, you can just create a few topics, something even to get started with. And then just having that ability to embed that in, in, in several places that you would want to be in portals or your apps or, you know, anywhere that you would want to. It's, it's, it's amazing just how much you can do with everything that's available under the ecosystem of our platform just with this one service out there. So uh, um, I, I love the feature and I'm, I, I, I can't wait to actually play more with it. I haven't had a chance to like dig deep into it and, you know, try and integrate into every other service. But yeah. from my the little, uh, you know, tests and sandbox trials that I've done with it, with some personal uh, chatbots and things that I've created, I've, I've enjoyed working with it. Nice, nice, nice. So I'm going to take Geeta's last statement and I mean, I'm going to give an honest answer this time. Okay. So um, what she mentioned, right? She didn't have enough time to like create, like, work on it a lot and create it. Yeah. So I think there's a huge set of people who know that this is a really cool feature who, who their daily job is to kind of work on apps and flows on Power Apps, Power Automate. Yeah. But it's like this bot is, it's a different thing. I know I can create it. I can create a simple bot. And I know, John, we made a video on that. I can make that simple bot within five minutes. However, to to have like an enterprise level board, I think you need to spend a lot of time in it. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of times organizations are not thinking about, oh, we need a board for this. They know that, oh, we need an automation for this. We yeah. need an app for this. But we need a board for this is probably not said a lot of time. So I think mm -hmm. there needs to be some awareness about that. And there needs to be some, like people need to realize that yes, the thing is you need to spend a lot of time on creating a bot, right? You can yeah. create a bot in five minutes, but you can, if you need an enterprise level bot, you need to spend time on the topics, what all it can do and yeah. the whole solution architecture. It's it's not a part of like one person cannot do the whole thing. It has to be a part yeah. of a team. So I think that's where I feel there's a bit of a gap that we know that we can make it in five minutes, Yeah. but to make something really useful, we don't know it's, it's like, should we do it? Should we involve somebody else in our team in the organization to start yeah. making something like that? So I think gotcha. that's where uh, that would be my answer. It's it's a great tool, but I don't have the time for it. <laughs> I like that. No, that's a good answer. And I think the what you said there is anyone can make a bot in five minutes, but to make a useful bot takes time. And that's totally true. And I'm finding that myself where um, to plan out what I want this bot to do. Like I have so many ideas, right? Like, oh, I want it to do this, I want it to do this, I want it to do this and this. I want it to pull all of our YouTube videos. I want it to go to the community and pull community answers. I want it to, to know all my preferences and be cheeky. Like, yeah. but to have all that takes quite a lot of time, right? To have yeah, I think all that. It's really important to identify those use cases that would want you to make a bot. You think of a use case where, oh, this could be a bot. Just coming up with those, like it could be something like a knowledge base or support, ticket management, and things like that. But yeah, I agree with you. It's it's more of just identifying first identifying what use cases are that you would think would be a good replacement for a bot, and then going and spending the time after you you know have a, a feel for how the interface is to build it. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Totally. All right. Thank you for what question do you have for yeah. us? So my next question was, what's the next productivity feature for flow makers on your wish list? Yeah, so I was thinking about this and um, I mean, there's a bunch of things, of course, you need a lot of things to make it easier. Uh, <laughs> but one thing which I feel I spend a lot of time on when I'm working on flows is um, how to easily troubleshoot it. Um, like whenever I have, and like, if it fails, it's generally like four or five of them will fail four or five of them have succeeded. So if I want to troubleshoot, I have to go through each one of them to understand where did it start? What happened in it and try to like get into the detail of each one, not knowing what triggered this and what kind of ended. Um, so what I want to see is a, a wave in within so i know power studio from john Liu. uh the his tools are amazing in doing that but i want something native um, which can help me troubleshoot all these issues that i have and flow is much more easier and i have to spend less time on troubleshooting 
and more time on creating the new flows. Kind of like a flow mapper. Like it tells you where it triggered and then everything that got kicked off and then at what point did it fail? So you just go to that one, drill into it and see what happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. to to export it and see all that, mm-hmm. that Excel itself is so ridiculous. Yeah. I feel it, it shows all the JSON and formatting that Excel itself takes a lot of time. So yep. it's like, if you can give me a better way to to understand where it went wrong in right in that screen, that would be like really helpful. Yep. Nice, nice. That's a good one. That's a good one. I think error handling is something we can always improve on. I think they've they've come a long way since day one. Uh, yep. The the natural language error messages are much better than they used to be. Oh yeah. But can definitely could definitely still come a long way on that. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the same vein of improvements, I think. Uh, for me, I would probably say I want the flow editor to behave more like the Power Virtual Agents editor. Uh, like, like when I put in a condition, like if I if I choose an option set, the flow just creates a condition for me, right? right. Or, or mm-hmm. if I want to uh, collect a variable it just automatically creates it and drops it in line later for me or allows me to just use a drop down to select it to set it right like there's so many finesse things that that virtual editor virtual agents editor does that i wish the flow editor did um one more even is like when i drop in the forms trigger right and we know always that that first forms action has to follow the flow (laughs) should just drop it in there right like it should just put it for me and so yeah. when I look at that Power Virtual Agents editor, I'm always like, yo, flow team, like you you got some stuff to learn. Like, come on, guys. Um, so yeah, I would say, I don't know what I would categorize that as. I would ask for general usability and, and mm-hmm. ease of use improvement. Oh, that's yeah, true. it definitely makes the flow maker's life easier, right? If some of the things are proactively placed for you, knowing the pattern that you're going to be working on. So totally. Yeah, yeah, especially when you said that option set thing, I had like goosebumps here. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I, if I had that, it would make my life so much easier. Totally. Okay, cool. Well, I was going to go along the same lines of error handling, but then since Vivek and John partly covered it, I'm going to go with something much more simpler. You know, it's one of those things that's it's really simple, but then it, you know, it's it's a big step. Uh, the is what that would be disabling actions, because a lot of time when you're building flows, you want to test things or you want to disable some actions, group them, and then just put them away for a bit while you're testing and things like that. I know there are workarounds and, you know, you can do all of that, but it would be really easy if you just go to the little ellipses over there and say, disable, don't run it (laughs) for this one, for this run. And then, you know, or maybe make it conditional or something like that. But that would be, it's a really small uh, change from a, from a, it's not a big, from just from speaking from a scope of the change or the feature, but it's definitely a big step for a maker because a lot of times I see myself wanting to put it into a condition or I'm using static mm-hmm. results and things like that, trying to disable actions, which would be really helpful. I could just do it in one button click or a flag. And that that's that's really, uh, I mean, you always end up doing some workarounds, right? I, yeah. I used to do if x equals y and then put that action into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like one equal to two. <laughs> then, do it yeah things like that yep. yeah yeah no that, that's, that's a good one yeah yep all right so um now that we have covered the power platform track let's uh let's switch a bit and let's talk um something more general so let i'll, I'll start uh, off with my question first um so i know 2020 has been a tough year for all of us but i wanted to know um did you find something good about it or something that happened good to you this year? And if you want to talk about that. So John, what what do you have? Uh, okay, uh, so I've had a perspective shift this year uh, a bit. And, and it's funny because when life, well, before 2020, before the pandemic in life, my, my goal was to make an impact, to travel the world and to meet with people and to grow their possibilities and to say hey look at this like all these people are doing this you can too and and that was how i measured the value of my effort was what was the scale of impact and uh 
And so it's been an interesting year where that's disappeared entirely and I have to measure it differently, right? There's still online impact, but it's different than being with people. Mm-hmm. And so all that travel to do all that took a lot of time away and I didn't get to see my family a whole lot. We spent a lot of time apart. And uh, and so this year I got to spend more time with my family than I have in the last five years. We've had every day, you know, together, like every possible day. There's never been a, anything missed because we're just always here because we're, we're being very responsible with our lockdown. And so we're always around and always together. And so I've developed, you know, some better relationships with my kids. And I, I don't know if it's better for my personal relationship. I think my lady might be sick of me. Alicia might be like, go back to traveling. My God. <laughs> you got to bring Alicia on the podcast sometime. Yeah. Yes, we need to hear from her. <laughs> if, you want the, if you want the real story. Yeah, yeah. Okay, check this yeah. out. <laughs> so I think, um, you know, that's been the blessing. That's been the good thing. And so I bought a boat this summer. We got to spend time on the boat and and do family things. And I think that, you know, I don't get me wrong. I loved my life before, but I think to a change in perspective has shown me the value of having that family time as well. Oh, that, that that really makes sense. And yeah, it's uh, it's something that we all have kind of faced as well, right? We we have spent more time with our family, just being along with them. So yeah, I, I think that that resonates with a lot of people. Yeah, I have to agree with John. I think that was uh, kind of made you realize that you're so much on the run, uh, you know, so busy doing things. And then when, when the lockdown happened and then there's nowhere to go, you're at the house with the family, you realize that there's so much you can do with, with just having extra family time. And it and it, it's almost like you're never going to get this time back. It's just, just because COVID happened, you have this. Otherwise, you know, it's really hard to get that back. Yeah. Um, on the other side, I think I uh, enjoy the fact that I can have a global presence because everything is virtual. You know, uh, all events are virtual. Things, these are things that I couldn't have been part of if it were not for the pandemic. Because now that you're home, you have some extra time, and and you know every part, every corner of the world, all the events that happen, be it professional or in your personal life, everything is virtual, and you are able to be part of it. So I think that's that's something that I is a good thing that came out of uh, 2020. Totally. Accessibility is like through the roof, right? The amount of information and events and 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 accessibility again to use just it's immense, right? You mm-hmm. I think we uh, Microsoft we we've been trying to tally it up how many community events happen in a month and so Chuck and I started hand counting. And uh, like two months ago, it was over 300. There was like 10 a day or something. It was just insane. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. I mean, so so the amount of, of content and, and creation happening is just crazy. And, it, wow. and that does enable so many more people to have that ability, right? Where when you're doing mm-hmm. an event online, that's 30,000. Whereas in person, maybe you'd have 3,000, right? And so just yeah. that scale is so much greater, for sure. Yeah, I do miss the physical physicality of your presence you meet people in person i definitely miss that but then there's also this comfort of staying at your home at your desk and then being present i mean there's there's, there's that missing element for sure but then now i can be sitting here and attend something on the other side of the world in my pajama pants i don't even (laughs) i don't even have to put pants pajamas (laughs) shout out to eliza saying yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, my first answer was what John took and said that I thought when John was speaking, Gita took away, so I had to think on the spot of something else which happened good to me. <laughs> uh, and actually my third one was, oh, I got to wear uh, pajamas all the time and that also John took away. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think... Um, well, you have your podcast. That's a good thing. Your first episode. Yeah, yeah, I started this podcast. Yeah, that's that's been it. Actually, was one of the goals that I had set for 2020. That went down in a lot of other ways, but I had a goal to start the podcast, and that I did. So I'm definitely thankful for that. Uh, but the other thing was the virtual piece on the the conference side. Is that's fine, but I think the virtual piece where I got to interact more with uh, all of you guys, um, with some other of my friends, like mostly 
a bit hesitant to just come on video or even do a virtual kind of hangout. Uh, but being knowing that everyone is virtual right now and doing all this, everyone was open for it. I know there was like a peak initially, March, April, May, a lot of it happening. It died down a bit. But still, I, I was able to like some of my friends in India, um, we are having some regular hangouts now. And I think at least now people like, I mean, are now used to it and are open to it. Before COVID, nobody was open for it. They were like, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. Now nobody has that comment to make. They can have time for this because they are just at home. <laughs> well, that's a really uh, good point you bring up because yeah. uh, thinking about it, I mean, there are people that you normally just text or you, you just keep in touch through, you know, social yeah. media and things like that. But this is the year where I, you'd never think that, I, you know, you would jump on a video call with these friends or family. And, and that that's... Yeah. That's that's uh, that's that's really cool. Yeah, one of the events was with uh, like our extended family, and it was somebody's birthday, and everyone like joined in. I didn't know these people ever, and they were on it. It was like some yeah. other side's family, and it was it was crazy. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, at least this is a good part of this that uh, we get to meet a lot of other people. So. Yep, even yeah. weddings recently I was part of a wedding and I was like I wouldn't have been part of it if not for 2020 yeah. now I can actually watch it stream and you know uh, have fun with it. the family on the site on the chat and yeah oh yeah that so yeah for me that's been a, a good part of this year so all right John what what question do you have for us all right I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and flip it on the inverse and say instead of celebrating 2020 I'm gonna ask when all this shit is over, <laughs> Where is it that you are going to go and, and what are you going to do there? So, Geetha, you first. Where are you going and what are you going to do? You know, this is one of those questions where you're like, I want to answer more than one. <laughs> I don't want to pick one. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's fair. Because things I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Because with, 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 with the pandemic, though, if you know, if I have to list the things that I really miss, travel is what tops the list. I mean, I yeah. Every year, I mean, we at least once in two years or every year, we try to, you know, travel somewhere outside the U.S. or, you know, explore some new cities or places. But then, you know, that's, um, I mean, number one would be, uh, you know, definitely I would like to go back to India where my parents live and my my, my brother still lives there. Uh, because that's something that you kind of realize the value of spending time with family and things. Now, who, who knew something like this would happen and you can't even travel or, or see your parents anymore or, you know, things like that. So that's mm -hmm. definitely because I would just like to go and just spend more time with them, right? That's uh, that's one. But then just like for leisure travel, I think I've always wanted to go to Iceland. I've been wanting to do the Northern Lights from Iceland. So I think that would be something on the list. Uh, I know right now the tickets are pretty cheap, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> they are. And they yeah. have a two-week quarantine period. Americans can yeah. go with a two-week quarantine. Two weeks, so. yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. going to take a month there if you want to. That's <laughs> right. <and> <laughs> Right. Yeah, but then if it's over, I think that might be a place I might start looking to travel. Nice. nice. All right. For me, um, so it depends on when the pandemic ends because it depends on what season it is then. Okay, fair. fair. Uh, but I guess, so yeah, that would depend. Uh, so that would decide my travel within U.S. Uh, I definitely want to visit the Northwest region again, the Pacific Northwest uh, because I know my wife hasn't been there, and I know it's it's an amazing place to be. So I know John's there. He, I mean, every time looking at whatever he, you have to share John with us. It's like uh, I want to see that. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. yes. I want to take you there. You gotta come. <laughs> yes. So yeah, that's domestic. But yeah, same as Geeta, I, I definitely want to travel to India. And the reason I haven't been there for the past four years. I haven't seen my parents for the past four years in person, and that sucks big time. I, this this year, uh, my wife had uh, her commencement. It was supposed to be ha happening in May, and the whole family was going to come here. We we're going to have a big mm -hmm. kind of go to Florida, go to uh, the uh, the Hogwarts studio. My mom is a oh, Harry Potter nice. fan and everything. So oh, we nice. had all that planned out. Imagine we had all the hotels booked, everything, and we had to cancel all that. At least I want to eat, either them come here or go there. So that would happen sure. after the weekends. Yeah. Awesome. 
Awesome. That's great. I love your guys' answers. You're so wholesome and sweet. Everybody's going to go see their family. I'm like totally different. You know what I'm doing, you guys? <laughs> I'm going to the UK to hang out with that crazy bunch of motherfuckers, and I am getting <laughs> wasted with them. <laughs> you got to sort of look at this sometimes. And I, I keep hearing all these amazing stuff about, uh, oh. you know, about the community there and then everybody there. And then I mean, I've met a couple of them at Embass here, but... I keep hearing and seeing pictures. I'm tempted to go there sometime. Just experience it. I mean, yeah. like John is more interested in the boots of beers. He wants to. <laughs> yo, yo. I mean, don't get me wrong. The city is fantastic. It takes a million years to get anywhere in the city of London. So you have to plan way ahead. But it's a fantastic city. Uh, and, and the history is wonderful. The people are great. And the community there is just immense and passionate and and and. Uh, what's the word? Hospitable. Everybody is doing their best to make you feel welcome and at home. And and so it just every time I go, it is an amazing experience. So I'll probably go there and then maybe I'll go to Scotland and then I'll jump over to like Amsterdam and then I'll go to Norway. And I told Alicia, as soon as the pandemic's done, don't plan to see me for at least a month, baby. I am traveling the world. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, no, we all can wait for it, right? We can wait for this uh, whole thing to get over, and we can we all get to do what we want. Yeah, I cannot yeah. wait. I cannot wait. All right, Gita, all right. what question do you have? For us? Yes. So, um, my question was, what would uh, or what tip would you give your twenty-year-old self? <laughs> That's oh. always uh, an interesting question, right? I mean. Uh... I mean, you, you could make know. it fun, or you could—it could be on a oh. series. It's totally up. It, it would be just thin hairs. Don't do it. <laughs> we got to see that. I know. I kind of want to see. I, it. I have to share some photos of I'm that. Like, but yeah. If do it, then we definitely want to see it. <laughs> I, I'll probably share that as the 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 art for the thumbnail for this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'll be fun. That'll be great. <laughs> uh but yeah before the, and after <laughs> yeah 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 you'll see a drastic difference <laughs> and my wife will be like i, I i'll take the full credit for that <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah on a serious note though i think the one thing that i would tell myself um 20 year old self would be that be confident um if you decide to do something just be confident and just do it uh because i feel like Right now, I have a lot of confidence when I'm doing something, but then it's like, am I doing this right? Should I be doing this? Should I be not doing that? No, just think that, yes, you have decided to do it, just do it and don't regret it. Make some, I mean, if, if you did it wrong, yes, you can always correct it um, later on, but yeah, be confident in what you do. So, yeah. That's very cool. Man, I take this question two different ways, right? The first way is like, what would I say to 20 year old John, right? And that's like very particular advice, very situational. And I would scream at him and say, don't marry that girl. But, but, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that didn't work out that well, but that's okay. It got me to where I was, where I am now. Everything happens for a reason, right? Um, but I think if I was talking to a general 20 year old self who wasn't going through the things John was going through and just life advice, um, I would say you shouldn't always look for the past in the future. Um, oftentimes the way we go through life is that we will judge every experience ahead of us by every experience behind us. And that leaves us really closed minded and, and not able to take in new opportunities. And we say no a lot more than we say yes, because we're afraid because all the pain back there. And I think what I would tell myself is if you just think about the past when looking at the future, you're just going to get more of the past. And the only way to have a new opportunity in the future is to not judge it by the past and to give it a new opportunity and to give it its own chance. Because for instance, right, one bad relationship doesn't mean every relationship is bad, right? One bad experience at a job doesn't mean every boss is bad. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we experience something that's bad in life, we'll hamstring ourselves because we'll then live in fear of that thing and we won't be open to that experience again or in a different way. And so I lived that way for a very long time, hamstrung by every experience I had gone through, afraid to make a change and to become who I knew I wanted to be. And so I would just say to my younger self, don't be afraid, like, don't don't be worried about the past. 
I, I love that. Nice, yeah. yeah. Then that kind of applies to pretty much a lot of us, right? Back when we were 20 years old, we're, the, our perspective of life is so different. <laughs> we have other higher priorities and, you know, we're not uh, thinking how we are today. That comes with experience for sure. Um, for me, I think I, it's kind of along the same lines of what, what you both said. I was just going to go with trust your gut. I would just go and tell myself, just go trust your gut. And it's 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 okay to take a risk. You know, that, that, that's fine. After all, you it's one life you've got. Why not? Just go and just do it. So that, that was going to be my thing. On a fun note, so um, I uh, took my, or I had my first drink very late in my late 20s. So I would have probably told my 20 year old that it's okay, go, just go ahead and take your first drink. <laughs> <laughs> Wait nice. for another two years to do this. <laughs> I love it, I love it. You know what I love you said there, Geetha, why not? It is a yeah. motto, it is a motto that I love to live by. It is something my uncle Keith has said to me many times and it's been a, it's something that's just rung true, right? Like what's the worst that can happen? Like why not? And I that leads to so much more fun than yeah. not living that. Oh way. yeah. Speaking of Uncle Keith, he reminds me how how full of fun he is. So I totally relate to that. Awesome. All right. Yeah, that that was some uh, really good uh, questions and really good answers. And uh, I definitely enjoyed uh, talking to all of you. Um, I do Ooh. have one surprise question, which you didn't know about. Uh -oh. So you have to pull up your phone, uh, pull out your phone, go to your <laughs> photos app, and oh tell me God. the last photo you Does took. This, do I qualify if my phone turned off? Oh, oh look at that! It, it like uh, it's zoomed up. The last photo I took. Yeah. I have to tell you or show you. You just have to tell me. Uh, okay. What 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 for? Here we go. I'll show you. It's a it's a picture of bed sheets. We just got. I just ordered the world's best pair of bed sheets. They're made out of bamboo. There's like oh, twenty nine. Yeah. They're the craziest thread count. They're super soft, and I just I had to take a picture to to just remember them. They're special nice. sheets. That's my picture. Oh, nice. that well, honestly, my phone really it has has turned off. There's like no power in it. But I remember, remember the last picture the... I took. <laughs> so it was a picture of a recipe from HelloFresh. Ah, I took I like a picture that. of a recipe for a stuffed squash with Australian couscous salad and things like that. I took a picture of that. That was the that was, I just did it last night. So that oh, was nice. <laughs> nice. And and you, Vivek, what's your last picture? The last picture I took was, uh, it was my parents' anniversary on December 2nd. So we took like a <laughs> screenshot oh, of that. Nice, <laughs> nice. Awesome. That's nice. Well, happy anniversary to them. Yeah. yeah. Happy All right. Uh, thank you, both of you, for joining us. Um, so, John, um, if you want to end with, uh, uh, how can people follow you? Where do they follow? What are you doing recently? Yeah. 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 So uh, if you just Google me, John Levesque, uh, you'll find everything you want. I have a YouTube. I have a Twitter. I think I own the first three pages, and so it's very hard to miss me if you Google my name. Uh, also, my Twitter is probably the main channel, John J. Levesque, and the S is silent. I know I say Levesque. There's an S in there. I know that's confusing. It's silent. Hi. Keita, uh, where do people um, follow you? Yeah, so you could go look me up on Twitter as G-S-I-V-E-D. And uh, also have a blog post that I try to keep up with. Um, it's Swaghub, S-V-A-G-H-U-B at WordPress.com. And I often try to share, you know, give some virtual swags of my experiences in working with the with the Azure Office 365 and the Pop platform. Nice. Right, Swag nice. hub, I like it. Swag. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'll, put, I'll post all the links in the description below. And uh, you can check it out if you're listening to the podcast. You can check in the show notes. Thank you everyone for joining us today and we'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you, bye.